In this video, we're gonna be talking about handheld techniques for music videos. What's up guys, Rosette Production here and today we're going to be going through a topic that you guys have requested quite a bit on my YouTube posts as well as in the comment sections of a lot of my music video tutorials. So we're going to be going over handheld techniques and just different tips and tricks that I have for you guys shooting handheld. Now if you're a beginner videographer and maybe you don't want to invest in a gimbal yet because they're kind of expensive, Honestly guys, I've been shooting music videos for like four years now and majority of my shots are actually handheld when I shoot music videos unless a gimbal like is necessary and calls for a shot. So first things first, before you get into your handheld shot, you gotta be gripping the camera properly. You can't be holding it out here and you know, waving it around, having your wrists like up and down like this. It's just not gonna look good. You guys have to be controlled and just really be in the moment when you're shooting. So what I'll do is if my camera screen flips out like my GH5 here, I'll flip it out to the side and what I'll do is I'll grip one hand on my lens, one hand on the side of the camera, and then I rest the screen on the top of my forearm here. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull my arms into my ribs like this. I'm gonna pull the camera close to my body and this is just gonna enable me to shoot a more smoother scene. So I won't be getting any really unnecessary shakes or anything when I'm panning around and getting my handheld shots. So now that we've established how to hold your camera when you're shooting a music video performance scene or a music video scene handheld, we're gonna go over some different techniques when filming handheld. So first things first, let's go over like performance scenes, just because we all shoot performance scenes in music videos. Um, so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grip my camera like this, and let's say the song is really hype. The artist that you're shooting may have a lot of hand movements and they're just going crazy in front of the camera. So you wanna to move to how the artist is kind of moving. So now two quick tips um, that a lot of people kind of overlook. One, focal length. So I like to shoot at around that 35 millimeter focal length. I think that's just like perfect when you're punched in and you blur out the background a little bit at like f1.8 or 2.8. And then the next tip I will say is point the camera at eye level. So uh, you don't wanna be pointing up at them, not, or not so much like pointing up at them, but at eye level with them. My favorite technique is if your camera does have in-body stabilization like the GH5 or the Lumix S1, Sony a7 III, I like to turn that off. And this is when you are only shooting your really upbeat performance scenes. What I'm gonna do for this is I'm gonna grip the camera like this and I'm just gonna vibe with the artist and I keep my elbows in and I literally just shake the camera back and forth. You can do cool things where you actually, um, let's say the artist is finishing up a verse, you can whip the camera to the side just really quickly like this and right before their next line comes up, you can whip the camera back in and then whip it out at the end of the verse, come back in. So that's a really cool technique that you can implement into your performance scenes. Um, another one I like to do is literally just shaking the camera with the artist and moving around. I like to move like, up to the top left, to the top right, back to the center. And just be careful when you're doing this too. Like um, sometimes it's easy to get carried away because you know, if the artist is hyped and the shot looks really good, you just get a little too carried away. So just make sure that you're kind of chill with it and you're controlling yourself. But keep in mind too, that you don't want to chop the artist's head out of the frame. You want to keep the artist's face in the frame the entire time. You don't want to go too low where you cut off like the top of their head or too high where their chin and mouth area is cut off. So you want to just keep it nice and steady or like semi steady and just kind of sway back and forth. And especially when the in-body image stabilization is turned off, you really don't have to move too much to achieve that really hype shaky effect. So yeah, again, I literally just like to move the camera up and down. Sometimes I will keep the flow going the entire time. Sometimes I'll kind of just vibe to the beat of the song where I move it to the left a bit, to the right, and I'm constantly keeping a mini shake going on here as you can see. So the camera's like moving just a little bit ever so slightly, but I'm also moving the camera to the beat of the song just like this. So let's go over performance scenes handheld with a more laid back song. So again, if a song is really chill, you don't wanna be having all these crazy different uh, movements and everything. So you wanna keep it nice and chill. So with this, again, I like to suck the camera into my body like this. And basically what I'm gonna do is just sway back and forth. So if you're standing up, sway ever so slightly back and forth, whether you're shooting like 
the side of an artist's face or even a front like a front shot of them or even from like an angle like a 45 degree angle you just want to sway back and forth just keep it chill especially if you're shooting like a pop song like maybe a country song or something those are just quick examples but um, you're just gonna be swaying back and forth put a little bit of handheld movement into it it's gonna look a lot more natural than if you're just sitting here like this this is a big no-no if you're just sitting here you may as well just run a tripod shot or um, if you are having like a shot where the camera's not moving at all then it should be planned not so much like if you're just handheld and you're just sitting here pointing at the artist and you're not moving or anything you're not keyframing it's gonna look super amateur so you want to add that really slow sway back and forth and not too much you literally can go like just ever so slightly i'm literally moving like maybe like i don't know four or five inches like to each side so yeah that's just another really quick tip for shooting a more laid back performance scene as for b-roll shots i love shooting my b-roll handheld rather than with a gimbal just because i can get a really punched in shot i can go right up to the artists i don't know getting a b-roll shot of them maybe counting money or something and go right up to the money then i can get a more mid-range shot and then i can get a further back shot so um, and I can do that all within like literally 20 seconds. Whereas with a gimbal, if you are shooting manual focus, like I would be on the GH5 or S1, I have to punch my focus, get a panning shot back and forth, go to my mid range position, punch the focus, pan back and forth, and then do the exact same thing for a more far away shot. You're more consistent and precise if you're shooting handheld for those B-roll shots. A lot of people ask me, you know, when do you know when you have the shot or like how much footage should you shoot? When it comes to performance scenes, I shoot the song from the very beginning to the very end. I preach this in like all my behind the scenes videos. You guys keep asking this question and honestly, I have the same answer every time. I've been doing this for like four years. I just felt that shooting the song from very beginning to the very end um, just ensures that you have a lot of footage to play around with. So when I shoot a performance scene at a mid range position, I'm gonna shoot from very beginning to very end, then I'm gonna get a far away shot, then a close up shot. And then I know that I have enough footage for those three performance scenes because I literally shot the song from very beginning to very end. So if my mid range footage didn't look that good at like the two minute mark, I can always get the up close shot or the far away shot. So at least I have like two other shots as like a safety net to use. Now let's go back to um, an example of a more upbeat song when you're filming a performance scene handheld, but let's talk about using a wide angle for these scenes. So the time that I'm gonna bust out the wide angle for a performance scene for a really hype song is if I wanna like see the entire environment surrounding the artist. So whether that's um, props or the location slash environment, or it's maybe a lot of the artist's friends or a lot of uh, subjects and other people that are in the video and extras, and you wanna just get the vibe of like everything going on in your shot, then I'm gonna switch to a wide angle. The wide angle that I use is the Tokina 11 to 20 millimeter. If you guys wanna see every piece of filmmaking gear that I own, including that wide angle that I just mentioned, I'll leave a link in description. It's my whole filmmaking kit, so you guys can check all that out there. I also want to mention my uh, music video guide that I have. It's a 59 page ebook and it covers like everything from basic camera settings to how to get clients for music videos, how to edit your music videos, camera recommendations, lens recommendations, literally like, any type of thing that you can think of for music videos, I bunched it all into a 59 page ebook, which I will also leave in a hover card up here and a link in the description and in the comment section of this video. Now, frame rates that I'm gonna be filming in in handheld are the same as using a gimbal. I'm gonna shoot 24 FPS shots, 60 FPS shots, and then the higher frame rates, 120, 150, or even 180 slow motion. If I'm getting a really jerky performance scene like this where the artist is rapping in front of me, he's going crazy, I'm getting crazy performance scene, I'm gonna shoot that in 24 FPS at 50 shutter. Sometimes I will actually bump the shutter up to around 100 or 200 just so you get less motion blur, or natural motion blurs. So yeah, that's just like a little tip. You just can play around with it a little bit for about 90% of the time, I'm gonna film in 50 shutter at 4K 24 FPS or any 24 FPS shot always shoot at 50 shutter because you're just doubling your frame rate. Any 60 FPS shots that I'll get will mostly be a more calm shot. So if I'm using a wide angle and I'm not really getting too many jerky motions with the wide angle, then I'm gonna maybe get a 60 FPS shot if I've already gotten a 24 FPS shot with the wide angle. I always get my 24 FPS shots first. I don't just jump to 60 FPS. And a big mistake I see filmmakers do is uh, shoot all their music videos in like 60 FPS. Like the entire thing 
in 60 FPS, and then they proceed to export their timeline in 60 FPS, which is a huge no-no. You wanna export or make your timeline 24 FPS, export at 24 FPS. But yeah, as for 60 FPS performance scenes, really only if I'm not doing crazy camera movements because if I shoot a 60 FPS performance scene and I'm getting like a super shaky camera movement, there's no reason to really slow that down. It's still gonna look shaky and it's not really gonna look too slow motion-y. So yeah, that's kind of a little tip, I guess, for 60 FPS shooting. Just try to stick to 24 unless you're doing a more stable shot where you're maybe like pushing in really slowly and then pushing out really slowly just so you can achieve an actual like really steady slow motion shot. And one last wide angle shot that I like to shoot when I'm shooting a performance scene for a music video handheld, um, I like to just like go crazy with it sometimes. Sometimes I'll take the camera body and literally twist it like this and I'll get like a barrel rolling shot. Like literally twist the camera as I'm like panning back like this and I'm just constantly twisting the camera, you know, back and forth. And this just achieves like a really dope handheld shot. It's just a little shaky where it looks actually like a little natural, but you're also just getting like a really crazy shot by twisting the camera. Um, another thing I'll do with the wide angle especially is again, if I'm shooting an upbeat shot, if the song's about to drop or if there's like a drop within like the middle portion of the song, I like to actually like right before the drop hits, I'll like shift the camera to like one side. And it doesn't have to be like super aggressive guys. You can literally just be coming in and then when the drop comes, you just switch, boom, just boom. And then you can cut into your next scene when you go into edit. Artists really seem to like that shot when I'm literally coming in even sideways and then beat drops, boom, switch to the right side or left side. It looks super dope. So that's pretty much it guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do you guys shoot a lot of handheld stuff? Did this video help you? Did you pick up some tips and tricks from this video? Let me know in the comments below. So with all that being said, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Catch you guys on the next video. Peace.